I'll be fine. I'll be fine, yes. I'll be fine. Good morning, everyone. And a very warm welcome to you all, especially to our first Holy Communicant families, visitors, and those watching online. The celebrant today is Father David, assisted by Deacon John. It is a very special day today, and I want to mention by name all the young people who are going to receive the body and blood of Christ for the first time today. They are Abiel, Emily, Ava, Alma, Eva, Ella, Emily, Evelyn, Florence, another Florence, Joshua, Kimi, May, Olivia, and Sylvie. They will all be receiving Jesus in Holy Communion for the very first time, so please keep them and their families in your prayers. You should have received a hymn book and a mass card. If not, please ask a welcomer. And please do join in the singing wherever you can. The toilets, as you probably know, are through the door to the right. Uh, The male toilet is upstairs. The female toilet is down a few stairs. And there's a disabled toilet on the level on the right-hand side when you go in the door. If your mobile, mobile isn't already switched off or on silent, please do so now. And as always, after Mass, everyone is welcome to join us for tea and coffee and cake in the parish room down the stairs. And uh, it's a great opportunity to meet other people. So please now take a few moments to prepare for Mass by reflecting quietly on the great gift Jesus gives us in his word, the Eucharist, and each other.
in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Isn't it lovely to see our children? We've already called them by name, processing in amongst us with lamps lighting. That's the power of our faith, the power of light in darkness. And the last time, there had a significant ceremony of a lighted, lighted candle was the day of their baptism. And now they take this next step on their journey. So to parents, family, friends, and all our Christian community gathered here, we rejoice this day. To those who have traveled to be here, you are welcome. David Murphy is my name. I'm the assistant priest here at the parish of Our Lady and the Saints of Sussex. So with this now in mind and this greeting, I ask the children now to, they can blow out those candles. Today is Corpus Christi, a very appropriate day to have this beautiful celebration. And at this celebration, to venerate the body and blood of Christ, we come together as being ourselves, called to form the body of Christ in the world. When we consume this holy sacrament, we are consumed by it. Created after God's image and likeness, we grow into that image as we receive Corpus Christi, and become transformed. Thomas Aquinas, who wrote beautiful hymns for this feast, said of the sacrament of the Eucharist, it purges away our sins, increases our virtues, and nourishes our minds with an abundance of all the spiritual gifts. With that teaching in mind, we acknowledge our sinfulness and present ourselves humbly before the mercy of God. Lord Jesus, you are the living bread, come down from heaven. Lord, have mercy. You give your flesh for the life of the world. Christ, have mercy. You call us to be one, as you and the Father are one. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
And our Mass this morning is offered for the deceased for Rosemary Cranmer. May she rest in peace and rise in glory. Let us pray. O God, who in this wonderful sacrament have left us a memorial of your passion, grant us, we pray, so to revere the sacred mysteries of your body and blood that we may always experience in ourselves the fruits of your redemption, who live and reign with God the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses said to the people, Remember how the Lord your God led you for 40 years in the wilderness to humble you, to test you, and know your inmost heart, whether you would keep his commandments or not. He humbled you. He made you feel hunger. He fed you with manna which neither you nor your fathers had known, to make you understand that man does not live on bread alone, but that man lives on everything that comes from the mouth of the Lord. Do not then forget the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, who guided you through this vast and dreadful wilderness, a land of fiery serpents, scorpions, thirst, who in this waterless place brought you water from the hardest rock, who in this wilderness fed you with manna that your fathers had not known. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. The blessing cup that we bless is a communion with the blood of Christ. And the bread that we break is a communion with the body of Christ. The fact that there is only one loaf means that 
though there are many of us, we form a single body because we all have a share in this one loaf. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to the Jews, I am the living bread which has come down from heaven. Anyone who eats this bread will live forever, and the bread that I shall give is my flesh for the life of the world. And the Jews started arguing with one another, how can this man give us his flesh to eat, they said. Jesus replied, I tell you most solemnly. If you do not eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you will not have life in you. Anyone who does eat my flesh and drink my blood has eternal life, and I shall raise him up on the last day. For my flesh is will food, and my blood is will drink. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood lives in me, and I live in him. As I, who am sent by the living Father, myself draw life from the Father, So whoever eats me will draw life from me. This is the bread come down from heaven. Not like the bread our ancestors ate. They are dead. But anyone who eats this bread will live forever. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So, if I could invite the boys and the girls making their first communion to gather here, you can sit down on the floor, you can hunker down. Right up. Turn this way. Come up a bit further. A little bit further, come right up. There's a nice space in front of you there. Now, that's better. All sit down there, nice and comfortable. And I have a little story to share with you. But it's also a story that's important for all these grown-ups here today as well. Okay? So this story is called the story of the stone soup. Now, can you imagine what a stone soup would be like? It would be very... doesn't sound very nice, does it? Right, well, let me tell you. So there was this man and he was walking through the land when he came upon a village. As he entered, the villagers moved towards their homes, locking doors and windows. They were very frightened because he was a stranger and they weren't sure who he was. But the stranger smiled and asked, why are you all so frightened? I am a simple traveller looking for a soft place to stay for the night and a warm place for a meal. There's not a bite to eat in the whole province, he was told. We are weak and our children are very hungry. You had better keep moving on, stranger. Oh, I have everything I need, he said. In fact... I was thinking of making some stone soup to share with all of you. 
he pulled an iron cauldron from his cloak, filled it with water, and began to build a fire under it. Then with great ceremony, he drew an ordinary looking stone from a silken bag and dropped it into the water. Now, can you imagine the plot that would make? Splash. By now hearing the rumor of food, most of the villagers had come out of their homes or were watching from their windows. As the stranger sniffed the soup and licked his lips in anticipation, hunger began to overcome their fear. Ah, the stranger said to himself rather loudly, I do like a tasty stone soup. Of course, stone soup with cabbage. That's hard to beat. Oh, look at that hand. Look at that sad face over there. Soon a villager approached hesitantly, holding a small cabbage he'd retrieved from its hiding place and added it to the pot. Wonderful, cried the stranger. You know, I once had stone soup with cabbage and a bit of beef in it as well. And it was fit for a king. Still a sad face? The village butcher managed to find some beef. And so it went. Soon people came along with potatoes, onions, carrots, mushrooms, and so on. Until indeed there was a delicious meal for everyone in the village to share. One of the older people in the village offered the stranger a great deal of money for his magic stone, but he refused to sell it, and he travelled on the next day. As he left, the stranger came upon a group of village children, just like you, standing near the road. He gave the silken bag containing the stone to the youngest child, whispering to, a gr to the group, it was not the stone, but the villagers that performed the miracle. So what do you think of that story? What it's telling you all about the importance of sharing, isn't it? How it's so important to share with each other. And when we do great things together, miracles can happen. And I think you boys and girls are witness to that today. Because with these wonderful catechists over here, and I'd like to thank them, with your family and friends, your teachers, and all the staff in the school throughout the year, you have been on an incredible journey in which you have learned and grown in your faith. And part of that is learning to share with each other. So when you think about how lucky you are, think about that time when you've really enjoyed sharing a meal with other people, perhaps at your birthday party. Sharing food with others is a special way that we can show that we care for each other. And the most beautiful and important way to do this is what you're doing today. Right here, Jesus will come to us shortly on the altar and you will receive him for the first time. I will say the body of Christ and you will say amen. And you know what amen means? It means so be it. So you are saying a big yes to Jesus today. And in doing that, as I said at the beginning, you are reminding all of us older people of the importance of saying yes to Jesus every day, of the importance of Holy Communion, of the importance of the faith that we share and the love that we try to have for each other. So enjoy now the rest of your day. And you can go back now to your seats and you can get your candles ready because we're going to light them for the creed. And I'll try to bring down this stool without doing myself a mischief. Deacon John is going to do that for me, so that's even better.
let us stand to profess our faith. And we say the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Brothers and sisters, we are gathered here to celebrate the good things we have received from our God. Let us bring to him our prayers for the needs of our world and our parish community. And boys and girls, you can blow out the candles now again. Pray for vocations to the priesthood, that God may call holy men to serve the church and bring the Eucharist to the people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the fair government and freedom throughout the world, that all people may live in peace, free to seek and worship God. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who cannot be with us today due to ill health, but they may be supported as they bear their crosses by our prayers and God's love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all the young people of our parish being confirmed or making their first Holy Communion today, that the grace of the sacraments may help them evermore to know love and follow Jesus. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for all the faithful departed, that they may soon join the angels in the eternal glory of heaven, and for those who mourn, that they may be comforted. Lord, in your mercy. Let us ask Our Lady to join her prayers with ours as we say, Hail, Hail Mary, full, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And again we pray for Rosemary Cramp, deceased, for whom we offer this Mass. O God, our refuge and our strength, hear the prayers of your church, for you yourself are the source of all devotion, and grant we pray that what we ask in faith we may truly obtain, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lady and the Saints of Sussex, pray for us. Our Lady of Walsingham, pray for us.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant your church, O Lord, we pray, the, sign, the gifts of unity and peace, whose signs are to be seen in mystery in the offerings we here present through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For at the Last Supper with these apostles, establishing for the ages to come the saving memorial of the cross, he offered himself to you as the unblemished lamb, the acceptable gift of perfect praise, Nourishing your faithful by, the sac by this sacred mystery, you make them holy, so that the human race, bound up by one world, may be enlightened by one faith and united by one bond of charity. And so we approach the table of this wondrous sacrament, so that, bathed in the sweetness of your grace, we may pass over to the heavenly realities here foreshadowed. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration and we with all the host of angels cry out and without end we acclaim Indeed, holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith.
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Richard, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever. At the Saviour's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. The kingdom of Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
O Sacrament most holy, O Sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving, every moment thine. O Sacrament most holy, O Sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving, be every moment thine. O Sacrament most holy, O Sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving, be every moment thine. During this month of June, we renew our devotion to the Sacred Heart of Jesus. Most Sacred Heart of Jesus, we place all our trust in thee. Most Sacred Heart of Jesus, we place all our trust in thee. Most sacred heart of Jesus, we place all our trust in thee. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, we pray, that we may delight for all eternity in that share in your divine life, which is foreshadowed in the present age by our reception of your precious body and blood, who live and reign forever and ever. If you'd like to be seated just very briefly for just one or two notices. So today has been the first celebration and over the next two weeks we remember to pray for all our children making their first Holy Communion. And I'd just like to again thank our amazing team of catechists, the teachers, the staff in the schools, you, the family and friends, for all the hard work you have put in since last September. As you can see, it came together today very beautifully. So, thank you. And thank you to everyone who helped out and who participated in our Mass today in whatever way. All these things build up Christian community. We've a few special events coming up as well. You heard me pray there to the Sacred Heart. Friday is the Feast of the Sacred Heart. And then on Thursday, we are marking the Feast of St. Richard with our annual Mass at Chichester Cathedral. And that will be at half ten. And it's always a special day for the school, but you are all welcome to come and join in that celebration in the cathedral at half ten on Thursday. Tomorrow, Monday, as you know, we had our confirmations a few weeks ago on May the 14th in Arundel Cathedral. But tomorrow here, we have the confirmation of a young man, Luke Sharp. So we remember Luke, Mom, Tracy, Grandmother Carla, and all the family on this special day. I have been given special permission from Bishop Richard to perform the confirmation. But I won't be wearing a mitre. And I won't be holding a staff. I think the dome would fall off St. Peter's in Rome if I attempted that one. There'd be an earthquake. But it will be a, a lovely day all the same. Next Sunday is the day for life. There'll be a special collection for that. And please read the newsletter carefully for coming events. And also next Sunday we'll let you know the final and total raised for the St. Richard's Church Heating Fund. Now, I have to fly off to Bosom for the next Mass, so I won't be able to join you for these celebrations, but of course we will be having our photograph afterwards out at the back in the patio, so I'll stay for that. So, have a lovely day ahead, everyone. Let us stand. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go and announce the Gospel of the Lord.